Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, European Crossover Webinar. Well, today is uh, NFP Day. That's why everything's all quiet. You know, I actually even forgot there was NFP Day. <clears throat> Just pretty crazy, but, um, you know, with OPEC and all the junk that was happening and shortened holiday week and the whole works, everything being all discombobulated, and on top of that, all these storms, there's another crazy storm again, except it happened yesterday early in the evening. Same thing, knocked off the electricity, need to go and build a frickin' arc around this joint. Um, but anyway, so it's so, I don't think there's any real news of any impact over the night. Let's take a look. Uh, So the euro is weaker. Uh, this is actually, the, I was mentioning some people, uh, this is the first um, time in the last, well, the last three meetings, each time it was a, a significant lower than the euro. Um, so we're working a little bit lower, uh, I guess, mid-session, the New York session yesterday. Now. So, you know, they might want to press it a little bit lower. But I don't think there's a whole lot left. But then again, it's NFP day. It would be interesting to see how it comes out. I just don't think that there's going to be a whole lot left for the euro to go and take another fall here. And I still think that they'll, they'll rally them a little bit, but I think that 1282, I think we'll eventually get there. Uh, but, uh, you know, every time Dragu speaks for the prior three meetings, that usually marked the low on the euro and off to the races we went. So if people were thinking it's going to play the same way, there really wasn't any reason to think it would because there really wasn't anything new. I didn't even, even listen to the press conference. Not only did I not even listen to the press conference, I didn't even pay attention to the headlines. I mean, there's, there's nothing that Pizza Boy is going to do that's going to make any impact. But, like I said, we, uh, you know, we, we weren't rallying, so I think some people might have, not that bad, I don't think, I was going to say, we caught, feel like they caught off a little bit off guard, or may have tried to play to the, you know, the same thing that's been happening for a while, and I thought, okay, so those people are going to be taken out as they press them a little bit lower, which is what we've done, but I just don't see a lot of uh, follow-through. Obviously, with the NFP, so they weren't going to go in and push in another direction, I guess. But I think that any pullbacks, you're probably going to have to question, even if they're looking, you have to factor in you know, the, a June FOMC, but I just don't see it. So I think that if you get any pullbacks in the Euro, um, on the 30-minute word of key support here at 1137, we'll take a look at that. I just don't, I think that, um, I mean, obviously, if you're short, I think that on any pullbacks uh, with uh, the, the NFP, that you'd look for it to go on and cover. And I really don't know how this report's going to come out. I mean, I still think the U.S. economy is good overall, so I don't even know what the, what the, the numbers are. Um, we can go into that. Okay, we're expecting 164. You know, this might even be just in line, to be honest with you. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do a little bit better. So, um, you know, if I had to guess, I would not even be surprised if we did something like, like, two hundred five, two hundred eight, or something like that. That's what I, that's it, and that'll obviously weigh on euro um, versus a dollar. But I would, if I was short, I'd be looking to cover on 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 a pullback. I don't, you know, it's so hard to say. I, I don't have a good feel on how I think that the year would continue to fall apart. I really just don't see that. It could play out that way, but I mean, 
if I was short into this thing, uh, I'd be looking to go into cover uh, if they come out. You know, if we come in stronger. Let's say the 204 something. If you don't cover on the first dip, um, cover on the second dip. I just don't think that the euros get. If we came in like something, obviously if we come in something like, which to be honest, with you, it wouldn't even surprise me with that either. I think the U.S. economy is stronger than most people can give credit for. But if we were coming in something like two thirty four, or whatever, yeah, then we're we're going to not only go lower, there'll probably be pressure throughout the day. Um, but, um, and I don't think that like something like in the two thirties would be out of the realm of possibility, but. Barring something like that, you get something like 198, maybe even you spook the market with something like 204, which not only shows the market, the overall economy remains resilient and stronger, um, it kind of you have to factor in the, the June rate hike. It'll take the stuffing out, but if you get something like uh, all the way up to, let's say, 203, 204, something like that, 205, I think that on the dip on the euro, you, you want to cover. I just don't see there's going to be a whole lot more to follow through. But uh, we'll see how this comes out. Let's take a look at the average uh, earnings month over month. Last month, 0.3, which is very good. Very nice rebound. And they're looking for 0.2. And I think that's, that's what would spook it. If we see something like, let's say we see, um, let's say if we saw something like 218, pretty steady growth, but we saw this jump up to 0.3, then there's going to be, there'll definitely be some pressure on June, but it would almost guarantee that they would be taking action in July. And then that once again, so uh, I think you're going to continue to see this go higher because you've seen a lot of, uh, you know, you see people strike. We just got off the Verizon worker strike, and see a lot of strikers. Well, for good reason. Like I said, th this is my whole been my point for the last you know a year is that as the economy's gotten better. I mean, I'm talking about corporate profits, and I don't want to hear a damn thing about no corporate profits are getting weaker now. They've had a doggone good run for the last three years, and they didn't want to pay a damn thing. So, like I said, now you know after the American workers have you know. Uh, you know, sacrifice, 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 and as things started to turn around, uh, these corporations just didn't want to, I mean, not all of them, but I'd say the vast majority, like 95%, just wouldn't give any kind of raises or whatever. Now people really pissed off and started, you know, lashing back, and that's what we've seen over the last, oh, not quite 12 months, but almost 12 months. And so I think you're going to continue to see this move higher, which is a good thing, but I'm just saying this. So it would not surprise me if you, I think it would surprise the market, but it would not surprise me if you got this as 0.3, and that would put a lot of pressure because it'd be like, wow, the pipes are factor in June, but it, it almost it'll ratchet up to July, like into the I don't even know what the, I don't pay attention to what the percentages are, but um, it would ratchet up July to at least in the 80s. It'd be in the 80s for sure, right at 80, the, the, the 80 percent chance that they raise in July, which I think is going to happen in July anyways. I'm not so worried about this average hourly work week. Um, obviously, if you've got something like if this blips up to 34.8, then it shows more pressure coming on. Uh, there's different ways to look at this depending on how the market goes. So if the market were, if we were on the market was going lower and you saw this, then it'd be like, oh, well, companies are willing to pay people for overtime than hire them. But right now, it would just uh, now the way to view it, which is would be the cup, the glass half full. Uh, any push on here say, wow, there's just a lot of demand. And so you can probably expect additional hiring for the months ahead, you know, and it, and it would just flip everything and make, you know, not only the case for, um, give this, I didn't forget the, about the thing about the mic, not only uh, would assure the rate hike much sooner, but it would, uh, you know, People then would, would start jumping on the S&P bandwagon like crazy, and you'd see a big move in a very short order. Lucas says, can you look at Kiwi? I don't look at Kiwi. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I'll take a look. We, we don't cover Kiwi, so I mean, I could bring Kiwi up, but what's the point of me bringing Kiwi up since I don't even look at Kiwi ever? It's just like saying, can you bring up ABC stock? I'm like, uh, yeah, I can, but... 
I don't even look at ABC stock. So, and maybe we will because it's going to be a quiet day. Normally, th there's no way I'm going to pull it up under normal circumstances because why am I going to take away from part of the day? But I guess I will because it's it's a slow day. Um, and look, it says, aren't Brexit fear starting to weigh on the euro now, not only the Great British Crown? I don't think so. I really don't have I mean... I, I haven't seen that talk. You're, you're bringing up a good argument, but maybe it will start to play that way, but I don't think this has nothing to do with the Brexit, not the euro versus the dollar. And I don't look at the euro pound. I don't look at the euro yen or anything like that. I don't look at those cross rates. I used to look at them before. It's, it's just too much. Um, and Lucas says, also stock-wise, do you think we may be in for good news, bad news, with S&P at their all-time highs, risk reward to the downside? Uh, well, I've already made the case. I've been doing that for a long time. You know that the S and P is going to all time highs for the for the summer. I made that blip, that bet with Blake like well, that was like over a month ago. But I've been bullish to hold on going way, you know, because I've been bullish on the overall U S economy for quite some time, and I think we're just going to go higher. I think due to the Brexit, I think that we're really overdone here. I do think. I think uh, on a, I did tweet that out on a risk reward basis. It's not bad to be good to get short. S&Ps because as we get closer to Brexit, it can spook it. Now, like I said, you'll have to, you know, dodge a little bit here on the um, on the unemployment. If we if we were to see something like what we were talking about, if you saw something, it would spook the S&Ps like we saw at 234 because I think June had to be baked in the cake. But if you see like a Goldilocks number, like 208, 204, and the wage gains are right there at 0.2, if not 0.3. It's, it's, it, people are going to be trying to cover this thing on any kind of a dip. But I think that there is a risk that we can go lower going into that Brexit. And um, But I think, like I said in the interview with Anthony Cardelli, I think any moves to the 2050s slash 2040s is going to be bought up like hotcakes. It's going to go like it's going out of style. So that's what I'm saying is is in technically this thing is just I can't I haven't been bullish and I can't believe I, I looked this morning when I got I'm like what the hell it's above 2100 so you you can't fight this thing I'm saying this I already like I said I coined that phrase I told Anthony Crudelli the 401k put more people come back to work and as they you start using their only viable means of retirement which is the 401k. They, you know, more being people being put to work, whether they're, they're buying their own company stocks or across the board, or they're saying, screw this, I'm only buying treasuries, it's going to provide that upside momentum to the S&Ps. Any, any, it's like what Evan talked about, sell puts. You know, it's going to be, it's going to continue to be that buy the dip mentality. So it, the S&Ps are just going to, it's going to be one of those things where, like a, I don't know, use necessarily that analogy like a boiling pot, but it's something that's just, you know it's going to be coming there. The force is little by little building up, and eventually it's just, it, with it, it may not explode up, but it's going to, the, the force of that's going to just push it higher. You know it's coming. It's just like, when does it come? But it's coming, and it's not like talking about it's coming and we're trading at 2020. No, we're trading at 2100. You know it's going to go. We're we're, what are we? I think we're like 30 handles away from all-time highs. I mean, I told you this is going to happen. I've been saying that for a while. It's nothing new. But we'll see how this – today's going to be interesting. It's, like I said, uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think this number's low. I think it's low. I you know, could be wrong, but I think this it's going to be something like at least in the 180s, I think. And 203 will not surprise me. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we got something like 234. I think it's going to be solid, okay numbers. It's not going to be great, but, uh, you know, if it came in something like 120, I'd be freaking shocked. I would. 140, same thing. I'd be shocked. I don't have a good feel on how this number's going to but I think this number is a little bit too low. I think we'll see at least the 170s. I think somewhere around close to 200 is 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 within reason. And I wouldn't be shocked if I – anything above 230 would be kind of shocked. But anything like 220, 230, 228, 234, it's not going to shock me at all. So we'll see. I think that the, the economy is just going to keep chugging along.
So we'll go on and, and move into the charts. So here's what I was talking about here on the on the euro dollar that we're into some support here at the eleven thirty seven. Obviously, we're not focusing so much on what's happening on the 30 minute because with NFP, we know that it's going to be like crazy as all get out. So we'll take a look on the two hour chart to see where things stand. All right, now where the hell's my mouse? Don't on it. It's happening to get, get seven, six screens going across, and you leave up losing your mouse, and I have to look on which screen it's on. Um. So I think this is still a possibility, this 1282. You know, so I think that, you know, if we get something like 178, 188, and you're short Euro, because there might be some of y'all that got short around here and still want to hang on, I'd cover on that dip. That's the way I look at it. I'd, I'd be covering on the dip. If you get a number like 178, uh, 193, I would cover on a dip. Do what you want. That'd be my take. I think that um, eventually we'll make it up in here. It's twelve eighty two. That's where I said that'd be the first place where you'd want to start to work in some shorts. But I think that we could eventually make it up here. Obviously, it certainly doesn't look like it at this point. You have to get past the NFP, and they're going to go with with um, how the momentum's playing. And you can look at this, and you know, I mean. You know how it was on the way up, and this market was just going with the momentum. Some of the stuff was crazy, like, how can it make another rally up? And I'll be doggone if it just wouldn't rally up. They're going with the momentum. You see what I'm saying? I thought it was crazy when it has got up here, and they just kept going with the momentum. Well, it's the same thing we're seeing here. Um, obviously, this 1066 is huge, freaking huge. Look at that. This 1066 coming across the board. We'll move this back here. You see, this is 1066. Look at this coming across. Now that's what you call the bias pivot. And like I said, I don't do pivots like everybody else. Uh, add the high, the low, subtract, or whatever. I don't care. I do it the way I do it. Let me tell you, brother, that's a bias pivot. So this would be huge, although I don't see it. Now, here's where that 1066 would be key. Um, if we were to get something like 234 or something like that, yeah, then we're going we're gonna to go south of the border, look at the split. Well, below 1066, when that 1066 would be the bias pivot, you'd be looking at 1036 as an overshoot. So if you saw something like the 234, let me tell you, the wheels will fall off the caboose. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm looking – first to move up in here, but you always have to look at both sides because even if you, you know, you never, one of the things I learned about Euro, you can never go in and say, it, can, it can't do this, it can't do that. I mean, that's why I used to, I used to think Euro was the biggest sorry, excuse me, sorry currency there was. And I remember when I would trade it when it was trading in the lower 130s and there's no way it can go higher. There's no way, and yeah, it did. And it kept on going higher. That's what I'm saying is, you have to look at things on both sides of the coin. So I think that we're going to make it up in here, and we could possibly go right in here, and I think this is a great place to get short for the longer haul going into the July meeting. But if we get a number, like I said, like 232, 234, man, the wheels are going to fall off the caboose on here, and 1066 will be the bias pivot. But I think that right in here is where they would stop. This 1036, 1066 the bias pivot, they can do an overshoot to 1036, and that, I think you'd be in good shape. I mean, from an intraday perspective, you could buy it for a bounce back. Then they probably want to work them all, but from an intraday perspective. But provided we don't get, get a number like that, and that's what I'm saying is I would not be shocked whatsoever if we saw number 232. I think it shocked a lot of other people, but I would not be shocked to see us get that number. I think today's going to be an interesting day because 
of where crude is still hanging around. We're at forty nine dollars, and I think it's going to be an interesting day because if we were if we were to get a number like let's say two twenty, it's going to show the resiliency of the economy, but it's going to it's going to spook the market, thinking that there's a good chance the Fed could 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 hike in June. So then that's going to send a downward pressure. But then, I think, like I said, the good number might send the spoos up. You might get a quick dip of eight or nine handles, then a quick rally back of 10 or 12 handles. Then we go back lower again because then they factor it again. It's, I think it's going to be a lot. I think it's going to be, a, uh, it could be, if we get something like around the 220s, it could be a very volatile day. I think I don't know how the spooks would react at first. I think they would spook them at first, then they'd rally them hard, then they would turn around and, and say uh, they would use that rally. I'll give you an example. We'll, we'll look. Well, we're not looking at the spooks right now, but they're trading at twenty-one on three. So if we got something like two thirty, they'd probably sell them off to like uh, nineteen, uh, nine, uh, twenty ninety, twenty eighty-eight. Then they'd rally them back again. But they take out the high, which I don't know what the high is. Okay, try is 2104. Remember, it's like we're back to that area, 2104 and a half, 2104. We'd rally and we'd probably take them up to like 2108. And then we turn around and then we start to come right back down again. I think it's going to be that kind of a day if we saw that number. And it, that's what I'm saying is I think that you have to look for these extreme moves in the euro. So if we got a number like that, obviously we'd weigh on the euro. They come back down. We would eventually get past this bias pivot. My thinking is we'd run out of gas between 1066 and 1036. This 1036 looks pretty doggone good. And then we'd probably um, rally him back towards 11. Maybe, I don't know if we'd make it up to this 1118, but we'd get above 11. Then we'd fade him in here, and then we'd come right back. I think it's going to be a very volatile day. And you can see the same thing. Similar, I don't think it's, it's much in crude. But it would suggest there's going to be continued good demand overall, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think it can be that kind of a day. So here's a dollar yen. My take is that, is that it's a buy between 8.33 and 8. But like I said, we go back to the same thing. If we get this... You know, today's NFP day, so we're going to see a lot of rock and rolling. So um, to play it on the safe side, if you weren't sure, uh, you could just put your, your limit to buy it like it's 792, 793. And then after, if they sell them off, you'd be able to get a good feel, and you're only 30 pips from this, this the bottom of this zone. I just think it's going to be a very volatile day. You're going to have to really have your levels and see what's going to happen. Rod says, I'm lost with crude today. I'm wanting shorts on. Um, I think you have to wait. Here's the deal with crude. Uh, you know, we're still hanging around. We, you know, I had that. It was actually Pedro that had asked me about three days ago, I think it was. I think it was on a Tuesday. And we, we, were, we, got, up to, we got about 50. And um, I had mentioned some comments about our Bob. And he said, uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, crude's still holding above 50 regardless of what RBOB is doing. I said, well, the idea that RBOB's not going to new highs tells me that this is all system generated. I think that was on, on, that was on Tuesday. And um, what I meant was that was just a code word for algos because I don't like to use algos because too often people use those as, cr as a crutch. But that's what I was saying. I go, I think it's, I, and, uh, in my humble opinion, I think it's, it's all system generated up here. And then the market ran out of gas. The wheels fell off the caboose, and we saw a pretty good fall. But they're back up here at $49. And I think that you have to, for now, respect it. The point is, is that if we do put in a top, then I think we're at the, um, we're not putting in a short term top. Um, we go in and fall back. There's going to be enough opportunity on the downside. I don't think you have to put your head in the choppy block this soon. You see what I'm saying? Um, but that's up to you. But we're still hanging around here, so you have to be careful. Um, along those lines, and we can take a look at that. We can take the spoos too. Um, dollar cat is just sitting here. Dollar cat, I think, is just waiting for crude to roll over and it's going to explode. 
And when it does explode, I think this is a great area to exit out, 3256. And really it's not even that far away if you think about it. It's like 150 pips away. Here's about 160 pips away. So maybe they can shoot beyond that. It just depends. If the wheels really fall off the caboose, then we could make it up to the top of the zone. But I think a good place to exit is this run up above 3256 because if it's not that far. So you could see stuff like where it rallies up here, 3218, it backs off only to about 3175. It rallies again to 3256. We fall off. 60, maybe only 50 pips, and then we rally back up here to 33.10, and they run out of gas on a short-term basis between 33.10, 33.25, and then we pull back and do a little bit of work, and if the wheels are still coming off the boot, the caboose on crew, then we go up to 33. But we're holding up really well here, so they're basically just sitting here on the launch pad, ready, ready to take off. I think I don't see a lot happening until then, until you see something come out on crew. And I still think that the cable, the onus is going to be to downside. We were talking yesterday, I said, any moves in here to this 45, I think for risk-reward, you just go in and you can, or I think between him and 45.50, I don't know if it's even going to make it to 45.50. But anything above 45, maybe 45 and a quarter, you can take the short side, because I think if we come to this Brexit, you just have to factor in those odds, and I think we're going to make it down here to 43.15. It's really that far away. It's only 100 pits, but I think we could you, could, you could scare the market. I mean, it seems like that's not a whole lot left, but if we take out these highs here and we run out of gas like right here before 45 or we poke our heads just above 45, I would not be surprised to see this market with a 42 handle as we get a little bit closer to that Brexit. I'm saying it's obviously... Uh, People could certainly could fall even further than that. But I'm saying is I think the market's going to hang around here. I would not be surprised to see them gun a little bit of stops above here. And then I think that it's, from a risk-reward perspective, I just think it's a, it's a safe, uh, I wouldn't say safe, but it's a very good uh, short. Because if we come closer, this thing could really come, come undone rather quickly. So it's time to take a break, so we'll catch a break, and um, when we come back, we'll, um, we'll take a look at what Gold's doing, um, S&Ps, and crude. And thanks for joining us here on um, The Crossover. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the uh, crossover, and we're going to take a look at uh, crude oil and S&Ps. Uh, Rod was saying uh, it will depend on the numbers we get, you think, for the dollar strength or weakness. Yeah, to some, to some part, uh, it will. We'll just have to go in and see. I just think that, um, I think the... I think they're looking at for 160. We saw it. I think it's going to be a little bit better than than that. We'll take a quick peek on it, and then we're going to jump right back into the charts. It's a slow day, so in anticipation of the NFP, they're looking for 164. No, uh, yeah, the last was 160. They're looking for 164. We can see if there's any back revisions. Um, and average hourly earnings, they're looking for 0.2 versus what was. Uh, last was was point three. So if we get anything up in here like the I, th I would not be surprised to see us get like 228. I think we're going to come in around 204-ish, 
around there. I don't think it's going to be like 160. I could be wrong, but you can see it's holding up pretty well here across the board. If we get up here around 230, it's going to really spook the market. And uh, but we'll see how this all plays out. See, we're, we're holding overall pretty steady in here in uh, our journey earnings. Uh, if we, it would not surprise me for us to come back in at point three, but uh, they probably come in at point two. But uh, this is going to be a good steady number because um, I'm talking about the uh, wage earnings because uh, you know you're, you're seeing more and more uh, people you know fighting back wanting their you know their raises for good cause. Corporations have been making like a ton of money hand over fish for the last few years and not sharing anything, and people have had enough of this stuff. So I think you're going to see that to continue to build up, which is a good thing. Um, we'll go back into the charts. Russ says, what are those economic numbers? Oh, those are just the graphs uh, on Reuters. You can, like, let's say here's non-farm payroll, and then you can you click on here, there's a graph, and then it'll give you this laid out for however many uh, months. So you click on here, and so it's got non-farm payroll going back here to 2011. You can adjust it to the links and how you want it to go and do it. You can put moving averages. So I, I just haven't used it in a long time. I used to use it. I post charge, but uh, usually it was like European economic numbers and stuff. But it gives you a good idea how things are, are coming along. I just haven't used that literally in... I don't know, like seven months, nine months, something like that. I would do it a lot when it would be like the the PMIs, European PMIs, to see if you saw something that was changing. So when I'd see these um, these PMIs, I'd like, this is when the height of the European crisis, not the height of it, but a lot of it, and I'd say, wow, my goodness, look, the the German PMI, let's say it came in at 52, and I go, wow, that that beats the PMI all the way back to Q2 of, of 2015 or something like that. I would look, use that to indicate that we have a new trend that's developing. Uh, but I haven't used it for that in a while. I'm not up early anymore for the early European numbers. Up at this time when you get these PMIs, I'm not even up at that point now. I used to get up like ridiculously early, like at 2.30 Eastern. No way. I mean, especially as I trade mainly crude, it's, I'll trade the euro, but I don't get up for this this stuff anymore. Uh, but let's get into the charts. So here's a cable. I think that there's still a good. Uh, I think uh, I think we were talking about in the the chat room. I think I was saying towards this 45.50, but really anything about 45. I think there's a good chance that we we well we're going to go to 43.15. That's my th thoughts. But um, I think that we can easily make it down here to 42.40 as we get closer to that Brexit. I just think that I I, I don't trade the cable, but. You know, I can't believe it if someone didn't take this trade up in here as we came back here. It, 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 this has been an emotional trade where people, when they, when when the polls come out, they swing one way and then they come out to the positive, they swing the other way. This one was a gift. This was an absolute freaking gift because this is what we were talking about getting short in here. Because remember, it never made it to that that price, and so it was here. They said okay, and then we were held. You were held hostage here. So I thought this was good and. We were live, I think, with Blake, and I said, hey, look, 46.92 uh, is a good place right now. And we went up higher, and you were held hostage for about a couple of days, and then we started to break, and I said, I don't think we'll get past 46.50, which we didn't. We popped up, and then we've gone back and forth. This move here was a freaking gift. It was mono from heaven. I'm not joking. I don't trade the cable. I wouldn't even pay attention to it when it got up here, but 
I mean, I wish I had been, because if I would have been, I would have taken that. I mean, that was just, from a risk-reward standpoint, all you had to do was put your stop above this 4770. Maybe put it like, be realistic, maybe put like 4817, something like that. That was just a freaking gift. Because you know the closer we get to the Brexit, it's the vote, it's going to have that downside concern. So anyway, enough of that one. So um, we already talked about Euro. We'll probably touch on that again when Blake comes on. So let's we'll go and take a look at gold. I really don't see anything happening here. It's just dead money for now. For now, I think obviously if we were to get a number like 234 and the concern is that they could possibly move in June, then uh, which I don't think they still would, then you can take a header. Other than that, I don't see nothing happening. But I do think eventually we'll get to like 1178 eventually. Uh, I thought they were going to, uh, you know, hold them here for a dead cat bounce in this 1239, and they just kept on going. So got to give props uh, to those that were looking for it. I know Anthony Crudelli was looking at the 1214. Obviously, we went even past that. I mean, just obviously people were really long. I didn't even realize how long people were. I mean, the sense that it really kicked everybody out, out the door. All the longs, they got decimated. So they were just sitting here. And I think it's probably dead money for quite some time. The only thing that's going to kick this in a different direction is is the idea that maybe the Fed has to raise in June. And even if they don't raise in June, which I don't see that happening, um, the perceived reality that they would be raised in July, which would probably allow us to go lower. I know Blake's been looking for lower prices overall. So I think that's the way it's going to play out. So we can go into crude oil. Um, going to the energy, so let's go into that area. These are just old notes. I haven't even updated. This is just something new. I just put the, the thing so that I can type something real quick during the trading day or whatever. But um, this is just old stuff. I haven't even updated this stuff here, this little note thing. Um, so here we are in the crude oil, and we've come back pretty good. I mean, this was this was a pretty phenomenal day. This one I thought we were going to run out of gas up in here. Uh, and... This is a very nice hammer bottom right here. Very nice hammer bottom. But as I've noted before is when we got this high, this secondary high in here, and even 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 this high here wasn't being confirmed by the by the R bob, okay? And so especially more so in the secondary high. This is right after the, the Memorial Day, and and we'll, we'll go into them in more detail because it might be a little bit harder to see them, but this is on Tuesday, and, you know, people say, oh, it's above $50, and I go, yeah, but nothing's really happening here in the, in the R-Bob. You see, we're going back up here to challenge these highs, or this high, I should say, so basically it was a spit away. And the same thing here with the Brent, because what I do is I look at relationships for my trading, because I'm just trading intraday. So here's that high, here's that high. We're spit away from 5021, spit away from this 5095. But where the hell is our bomb? Down here. And I'm like, well, what the hell's wrong with this picture? Our Bob has been driving the bus for the last six or seven weeks. That told me that this was just, as I told Pedro over Twitter, and I put IMHO, in my humble opinion, is just system generated. Basically, that's my code word for algos. I go, they're just pushing it up. That's all they're doing. Because this move's not being confirmed by our Bob. And at the time, we were coming into this resistance. I, post, I think I posted this chart. I don't know if I posted it on the regular feed, but I think I posted it on Inside Call, I believe. And we were just coming up to that key level here. We came up, but we weren't above it. Not only were we not above it, we weren't confirming this move. And then, as you saw, the wheels came off the caboose.
so we'll break that down just real quick because we have some time. Uh, just as our bot, it's not our bot, it's our B.O.B. It's, it's gasoline. So gasoline has been been the driver of this market, plus we're into the fertilizer, and I'm not saying it's a pun, that's just the way I talk. So I say something you know, like a market's running out of gas, obviously we talk about our bot, but I'm not saying it in a pun way. I'll say that about the euro, hey, the euro ran out of gas, and blah, blah, blah. But the gas market has been the driver of the market for about the last six or seven weeks. And the idea that we're into the May driving season, um, this should has every reason to even further lead the pack. And the idea that it wasn't lead the pack makes made me question the validity of a move up here. I mean, like the saying goes, price is truth. Uh, but it made me think, I don't think there's any real juice behind here. It reminds me of that Jay-Z song, Show Me What You Got. And I don't think they had anything behind them when I looked at what was here. So we're up here a spit away from highs, the old high. Brent a spit away from the high. And on Tuesday, where was our Bob? S sitting over here. I'm like, it rallied, but it's below here. Nowhere near this high. So I'm like, what's wrong with this picture? It should be here. Now that would have been confirmed. I'd be like, "Wow, well, I don't know what's going to happen." No, it's down here. So I'm saying this doesn't look good. And then we ran out of gas. We pulled back. And then um, to it, we'll, we'll go to, and I'll show you a different screen. Because anybody looking at something in hindsight and say, "Well, this happened, that happened." Well, I was already seeing that in real time. I talked to Pedro on Twitter. But another thing you could have looked at, so that the, 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 the charts I look at, time frames are two hour, that's as long as I go, two hour, and I look at a 30 minute and a five minute. So on the 30 minute, this is what we were on Tuesday when that was happening. You see here, I wouldn't call this a shooting star because the week's not very long. All those come back up here, but this is a nice gravestone doji. That's a gravestone doji. And I did tweet this out about this. This uh, We're in the bottom of this zone channel. And you can't really see it unless we did it on a four-hour. We could pull it up here. But you're not going to see this clearly. You see, it's, it's a big channel. But my point is we're back up here to the bottom of this zone channel. So when I was making that, det not determination, but that assessment of what about our Bob, um, there's, here's, here's crude oil sitting here, and it's struggling, you know, with this level. And I'm thinking, well, this is just after the holiday. Nobody, we don't have as many participants. So the, the algos drive it up here because it's thin, thin participation. You can see this big white bar here. I'll highlight it for effect. You see here, they drive it up here, and they get up above 50, and they can't do anything with it. So they're kind of sitting here. And so we're still sitting here. These are half hour bars, so it's not like it's a five minute. And then here, to me, that's good enough overall for a Greystone Doji. I would not call this a shooting star. The wick's not that long, plus the body's up a little bit higher. If the body was like here, but the wick's not that long. But when I look at this, I'm, when you look at overall, and you say, okay, they drove it up on lower participation, then we have some struggles. This isn't really a shooting star, but we sit here, and it's, if the wick was a little bit longer, it would be almost like a spinning top, uh, a little bit longer. Then you get this, and like, this market looks like it's running out of gas. It doesn't look like it has anything. So at that point, you can start to say, okay, you know what, I'll take a pot shot and put my stop above here. And, uh, and if they stop you out and it runs out of gas, you jump back, break in again, because then that's all they did was stop you out. And then all of a sudden you saw the rest is history. It was just started selling off. So that's my thinking here. It's a Friday. And now this is the one time I think you, you can look at a daily chart and you look at a weekly chart. Oh, God. And you see there was, those, there was an analogy, which is not an analogy. You see, let's go back to that. Where the hell are we? 
Okay, here. Okay. So that here we were. And I still, this is not a shooting star, but this is a very nice gear. Don't do it. Because I, I switched over to hour to go on and update the, where, where I made the adjustments. But that's a very nice gear. Don't do it. You see that? And it actually, that's why I, some people look at hourly charts. I don't. I look at the 30 minute. You can see, obviously, you can have double the bars if you're using a 30 minute, but you can see how this isn't a shooting star. Some people might think, but like I said, the wick's not that long. But you see how we sit here. Then you get this one, which the wick's not that long, but it's almost like a hanging man. If it was a longer wick, it'd be good. So it's almost like a hanging man. Once again, it's near the top. And then the mark's sitting here. And then this is a gravestone doji. That is. So at that point, you're like, well, I've got to take that trade. And then, you know, the rest is like set history. But I think now today is a day where you have to look at daily charts, weekly charts. One thing I said in the interview with Anthony Crudelli, um, crude oil is a very technically driven market. They just go with the technicals. So as long as it's holding here, how can you fight it? But it's NFP day, so who knows what's really going to go on and happen because it's got how the, it will perceive the data. It's not what the data is, it's how the market will perceive the data. See, if we get something like, um, like let's say 210, we're probably going to stay overall higher because it's going to show there's probably going to be still good, good demand. If we, make, if we get something like 230, which I don't think would be like out of the realm of possibility, it's going to show this economy really has something to it. We may try and rally it, and we are going to show good demand, but this whole thing with the where they raise or they don't raise in June will really spook the market, although I don't think we'll see that move come to fruition on the downside if, it were, if that would happen in the crude oil market to probably the start of next week. So you have to look at a little bit bigger scope, but if we're closing up here around this $49, that's going to be, I mean, you have to look at it on a, on a daily chart, and we can do that. We're moving to the other charts again. So here we are looking at a two-hour chart. Let's take a look at our daily chart. Now it's Friday, so you have to kind of, this is one of the few times I'll look at a daily chart. You see, this is on a daily chart, and, it, and we're close to up here, and it sure looks like these are a couple of back-to-back -back hanging mans. You see? You know, the way I kind of look at it, I'm not going to press it. I'm just not going to press it because we're up here near these highs, you know, but I think that we're probably pretty close to I mean, I think I already said that on Anthony Crudelli show. I think we put in the top here. I think starting next week we'll start to work lower. But it's the end of the week. It, here's the deal. I think, it's good. I think we put it at the top. But I'm not going to challenge the market on a Friday. I'm not trying to scalp or something like that, but I'm, why am I going to put myself in the crosshairs of the market and risk calling over the weekend when, if this really is a top, I can just come in on Monday and we'll see the market weaken at that point. That's the same, but we are starting to see things. That they go with the, Chris is a very technically driven market, like I was telling he didn't, he, not, he didn't know that, but I was mentioning this to Anthony Crudelli. You see how these guys and gals, they just go with the trend. It's a very technically driven market, but I think on a bigger scope, this is what kind of got me bearish at first when I saw this, which I thought was you know, a hanging man there right in here. And I thought the market was going to work lower, which it did, but then we reassert ourselves. Okay? Uh, and we've We've made this run here. This run here was the Canadian fires. And then we got the EPA, which boosted our Bob, and that gave us another boost. And then this on a daily chart, then we get basically like a hanging man. We dip lower, but then we make another run back up here, and it looks like the market's kind of like run out of gas. And then you get here. It could be longer, but you're getting a hanging man up at these levels. I think Blake's here. Hang on. I'm here. Hey, Paul. Hey, Blake. Uh, hang hey. On a second. Man, that time went by fast. Holy smokes. It's all right. You can continue on with your 